With iOS 18 developer beta already out and Apple Intelligence features to come to the iPhone later this year, there's been a lot of buzz around features like home screen customization, the ability to hide apps, new calendar app features, recommended battery charge settings to help with the battery health of your phone, all of which sum up to these questions the average consumer would ask. How do I enable and navigate through these features and what exactly is Apple Intelligence? Well, say no more. In this video, I take you through all those features and answer the questions. Buckle up and let's go for the ride. Starting with what you guys are most excited about, the home and lock screen customization. Now, I know the Android users in the chat are going to say Apple is a little bit late to the customization party, but like they say, good things take time and Apple absolutely delivered on the customization front. Case in point, in iOS 18, you'll be able to customize all the app icons once the public beta drops, which is in the case with all the Android apps, more so if you customize your phone with the monochromatic theme. Starting from the lock screen going in, you can now customize your lock screen and comparing it to iOS 17, I'll take you through the changes. First up is the addition of a new color gradient for the clock and by going to your lock screen, then pressing and holding for a few seconds, a customize option will pop up after which you'll click on it and tap the clock and all the color options will be displayed. Another addition to the home screen customization toolkit is the ability to add two apps of your choice to the lock screen page and as you can see, compared to the iOS 17 home screen, the album and three dots icons have been moved up to create room for this new feature. I like this new feature as it allows you to access any app of your choice fast and in my case, I've got the Torch and Apple Home. Speaking of the torch, you can now adjust the size of the beam by swiping left and right then for the intensity by pushing up and down. Another new feature I picked up on the screen is the animation of the bezels and comparing it to iOS 17, you can see the bezels swelling when you press the power, action and volume buttons. Now while this might look like a gimmick right now, something tells me Apple might add haptic feedback to these buttons when the iPhone 16s come out later this year. That aside, getting into the meat and potatoes of the customization, if you tap and hold the screen, you'll notice that on iOS 17 you've got a plus icon and on iOS 18 it's an edit button and that's because iOS 18 now gives you the option to customize just like this. By clicking on customize, you can now change the look of your icons and whether you want large or small icons, a dark light or tinted theme, you've got it right at your fingertips and if those are a bit too complicated for you, you can simply tap on automatic and the theme will automatically change depending on the time of the day. Personally, the dark theme does it for me. Let me know what's your favorite in the comment section. Moving along, another home screen customization feature that got iPhone users excited is the ability to move your app icons anywhere within the imaginary grid lines. Now, if you'd ask me, I'm all for the changes, but I lowkey liked how Apple's simple layout kept everything neat and organized. With these new changes, brace yourself for some disastrous screen layouts. Speaking of disastrous, another thing that would lead to that is your passwords leaking and even though Apple's iCloud keychain in settings did a good job of controlling that, the introduction of a dedicated password app in iOS 18 just fortified and made better an already impressive storage system and here's why. In the password section under settings in iOS 17, you only had security recommendations and underneath that, all your saved passwords, but with the new passwords app in iOS 18, you've got a lot more features besides your password and security recommendations. You can now store your pass keys to passwords and applications, share network codes of Wi-Fi networks you've been connected to in the past, and if you'd ask me, this is such a lifesaver given that reading out your Wi-Fi password to every guest or sending them to the corner of the fridge to get the Wi-Fi password when you have friends around is such a big hassle. All in all, a good addition to the app catalog and the perfect place to lock your passwords. Speaking of locking things, iOS 18 now allows you to lock applications and hide them away. If you'd ask me, this is going to be a lifesaver for the sneaky peeps out there trying to hide Tinder and I would not be surprised in the not so distant future if someone blames Apple for causing their relationship to end thanks to this feature. Anyway, relationship dramas aside, to be able to do this, simply tap and hold on the app you'd wish to require Face ID and a menu with different prompts will pop up. 
From there, click on Require Face ID and you'll get another menu which will give you the option to just Require Face ID or Hide and Require Face ID. If you choose Require Face ID, just like in your financial applications, whenever you tap on the app, you'll get the Face ID prompt in order to log in. Hide and Require Face ID on the other hand will hide the application in a hidden folder somewhere in the app library and to access it, simply tap on the hidden folder and your Face ID will grant you access to play around with the app. Speaking of which, you can now play around with the widget sizes in a few different ways and starting with the latest one, by tapping and holding onto the screen, a grabber will pop up on the corner of the widget after which you can hold onto it and adjust your widget to a size that best suits you just like this. If for some reason you don't enjoy doing it that way, by simply holding onto the widget a menu will pop up and from it, you can choose a widget and shuffle the sizes however you want. Talking of shuffling, the control menu also went through a major reshuffle and starting with the plus sign at the very top, it now allows you to add any control function you'd like so whether it's notes, headphone levels, shazam or the calculator, you'll be spoiled for choice thanks to the endless list of options you've got. Moving along, just like we pointed out earlier, the widgets in the control center are also customizable through the same process. Other control center changes worth mentioning are the addition of four icons to the right which give you access to different control center menus and we now have a power button in the top right corner. Now if you'd ask me, I'm all for the addition of the power button in the control menu as it makes the process of switching off your phone a lot faster and simpler compared with the traditional way of holding down the power button and either of the volume buttons. Speaking of your phone being off, another way this happens is when your phone battery runs flat and a cool feature added to the iPhone while in that state is the ability to see the time and this feature in tandem with emergency SOS can be an absolute lifesaver in those dire situations. Still on the battery train, while charging using a charging brick with low wattage, your phone will now notify you the charger is slow and if you thought that was it, there's one more. While charging, your phone will now recommend a charge limit based on your charging habits and if you'd ask me, another clutch feature especially when it comes to the battery health of your iPhone. Carrying on with the new features, the photo and camera apps were also not left behind and starting with the camera app, you can now record video and listen to music at the same time which for a person like me who doesn't like their music interrupted while recording a personal best at the gym is an app that I wanted so bad. By the way, this is an app that I accidentally picked up while recording myself at the gym and for a moment, I thought it wasn't actually recording so I had to get up and make sure the camera was running. My accidental find aside, once the recording was done, it obviously goes to the photos app and this is another area that got a complete overhaul. Getting into it, you'll notice we no longer have tabs at the bottom and for the media types, you have to swipe left to access all the media files. In addition to that, we now have a search bar at the top that pulls up photos, videos and screenshots depending on the prompt you input. For instance, if I search rugby, anything in my gallery related to rugby pops up which is quite handy and if you'd ask me, Apple intelligence definitely has a hand in that. More on Apple intelligence a little later in the video. Speaking of video, the video player now looks a lot different from what we had in iOS 17. The play, pause and mute buttons move from the bottom menu and all the edit features move from the top to this menu at the bottom of the screen. Moving along, the calculator app was also not left behind and starting with the user interface, there are a few cosmetic changes but where the real magic lies is in the calculations. We can now see the full math equation in iOS 18 when we type it in, whereas in iOS 17, only one part of the equation is shown at a time. If you thought that was it, it just continues to give. Now when you tap on the calculator icon, you get a list of options and whether you want to convert currencies or measurement units, do basic math, scientific equations or solve some tough math equations in math nodes, you've got it all in the calculator app. For instance, back in my high school days, I wouldn't have an idea on how to solve pi squared times 4 plus 1 and by simply writing it up in math notes, it spits out the answer immediately and the best part is, that's just scratching the surface. On iPadOS is where you can solve some deadly math equations and even when you throw in variables like y's and x's, it solves the equation in a matter of seconds. Again, if you'd ask me, it's all 
Apple intelligence. Moving along, other features worth talking about are in the calendar and reminder apps and straight from the get-go, you can see the user interface is different from iOS 17 and so are the features. Reminders are now backed into the calendar app and by pinching and zooming in or out, you can adjust it to your ideal size. Having just gone through some productivity stuff, it would be worth it to touch on the chill side of things and that's where game mode comes in. In iOS 18, when you log into a game, the game mode sign pops up and according to Apple, it pauses background activity to optimize performance of the game. Speaking of which, it also helps with latency when it comes to the connection of Bluetooth controllers and hearing devices like AirPods. While on the subject of optimization, Apple intelligence without a doubt will completely optimize the iPhone experience and I say will because a good chunk of the Apple intelligence features will come to the iPhone later this year. Nonetheless, let's go through what Apple intelligence really is. Now, in case you never really picked it up, Apple devices have been using Apple intelligence with features like autocomplete, Siri, but now they're taking it to the next level thanks to new diffusion, generative and language models, all of which are built by Apple. Something to note though, these Apple intelligence features will only be supported by the highest end Apple Silicon devices, which basically means iPhone 15 Pro and above in the phone department, then for the laptops, iMacs and iPads, anything that's got an M1 chip or later. Getting into the meat and potatoes of Apple intelligence, we'll start off with Siri and for the first time since Steve Jobs took us through how Siri works 10 years ago, I can say it's now the personal assistant we've always wanted it to be. It now has a new look with a glowing light around the edge of the screen when you give your iPhone the Siri prompt and when you get into the functionalities, that's where it really shines. Thanks to better language capabilities, Siri will now understand what you're trying to ask. For instance, when you wrongly pronounce a word, it will figure it out, which is a much needed change from the response it's always been giving us. Here's what I found. Moving along, if you thought that was it, there's still a fair bit in store. Siri will now have contextual understanding when you give it prompts and that also trickles into personal stuff. If you've got a friend visiting and you can't remember their estimated time of arrival, you can ask Siri to pull up the info from your chats and in a matter of seconds, Siri will spit it out to you and if you don't want everyone to know who's coming, you'll now be able to type to Siri and get responses by simply double tapping at the bottom of your screen. Moving along, writing tools is another Apple intelligence feature that will come in clutch when writing those essays, emails, you name it. You'll now be able to change the tone of whatever you're writing to sound friendly, concise or professional and if you made any mistakes, Proofread will clean it up for you. If you'd ask me, it's basically Grammarly on steroids. Speaking of apps on steroids, the calculator app also got a sprinkle of Apple intelligence and like pointed out earlier, the addition of math nodes and ability to solve scientific equations makes Apple devices stand out in the AI game. Moving on to the playful side of Apple intelligence, you'll now be able to create generative emojis by tapping in prompts and this capability also trickles over to the people in your contact list so you can now turn that annoying friend into a garbage collector and send them that genmoji. Another Apple intelligence feature that works along the same framework is Image Playground and what it essentially does is allow you to create an image of anything you want, then turn it into either an animation, illustration or sketch and this includes the people in your contact list so for those special days like birthdays, graduations and anniversaries, you'll be able to create a specialized image and send it to those loved ones. Speaking of sending your contact staff on special days, you could also send them a memory movie of the times you've spent together or a montage during an event you both attended. As if that's not enough, when you take photos while hanging out with your mate only to later realize there's a rubbish bin in the background or that annoying person who secretly photobombed, you can now easily delete whatever you don't want in the background. In case you didn't know, Google phones were the first to introduce this feature. Now, with all this Apple intelligence stuff, a lot of data obviously changes hands and you might be worried about your personal inflow floating around, but the good thing is majority of the data transfer is on device and in the event the prompt is outside the area of expertise of that particular model, it can either go to Apple's large servers using private cloud computing or chat DPT if the prompt is suited for it. The example Apple gave is asking Apple intelligence to create a five course meal for all the test parts with a specific list of ingredients. Once you've put in the request, you'll get a prompt asking you if you'd like to go ahead with chat GPT and every time you'll have to decline or give the green light and the best part is your IP address is hidden and OpenAI are not allowed to store any of your data at any given point. 
With the middle of the bones of the iOS 18 and Apple intelligence features completely stripped out, I hope I answered your question on how to enable and navigate through iOS 18 features as well as cleared your doubts on what exactly is Apple intelligence. From a personal standpoint, for the first time I can say, Apple's tactile being led to the upgrade party this time round worked out perfect as Apple intelligence features like writing tools, image wand, priority notifications, and a much better Siri already look better than what we've seen on the likes of Google's and Samsung's AI features. Will this stand the test of time? We'll have to wait and see. In conclusion, Apple intelligence is the perfect blend of cutting edge technology and human intuition seamlessly woven into the fabric of everyday life. And whether you're looking at recipes, bringing up memories, lighting up those important deaths of the people in your life or trying to solve complex math or scientific equations, everything is just a voice scribbled or typed from the way. Well, there you have it peeps. I hope you enjoyed and found this video helpful. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. Now, since most iPhones from the days of the iPhone XS will support iOS 18 features, the cutoff with Apple intelligence is the iPhone 15 Pro and above. So if you also want to enjoy those Apple intelligence features, check out this review of the iPhone 15 Pro to give you a preview of what to expect. Until then, people of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.